All right, so we're going to be talking about the fish shell, which is uh, it's a command shell. It is kind of an analogy for uh, Bash and Zeesh. Uh, I'll avoid using the word replacement, Hans. Um, and uh, its website calls it a command shell for the 90s. It says, finally, in a tongue-in-cheek way, finally a command shell for the 90s. And uh, what they're getting at there is since the 90s, we've had all of these really amazing technological achievements like uh, 256 colors in our terminals and the World Wide Web and uh, end curses and things that aren't read line. Um, but we've never actually applied any of those to the tool that we use the most, our shell. Like Bash and SH still feel, at least de by default, still feel a little bit like the early 90s. Um, and so Fish's goal is to kind of address some of that. Um, and one of its main goals is to use some of that stuff to address like usability, to just be really usable on the command line, really user friendly. So some of the ways it accomplishes this are syntax highlighting. So as you type, your different parts of speech will show up as different colors. It's like magic. Your editor's been doing it since forever, but Bash, you have to, and Zeesh, you have to configure to get this to work. And it will, uh, um, in addition to highlighting, it'll do not only syntax errors, but like if you do commands that don't exist, it'll be a different color. Um, so you can save yourself the trouble of having to install Steam Locomotive if you're like me and you type SL all the time instead of LS. Um, it'll do auto suggestions. I don't know if you can see the gray is probably too close to the black there, but it completed the rest of the word archive. Um, so it'll do automatic completion um, as you're typing commands, arguments, paths, stuff like that. Um, so you don't have to remember those. It'll also do tab suggestion. So if you type something ambiguous, you can hit tab and it'll give you a nice little menu including um, these little descriptions of like what all of the options are. So you can like arrow key through that menu. So if you type like JA, if you can't remember if you wanted Java WS or Java H or whatever, it'll give you a little menu that explains that to you. And you can kind of mouse through it with the arrow keys like this. You can type to search, uh, stuff like that. So it makes your command line a little bit more discoverable um, than it would have been if you had to kind of like do in bash, like we type the beginning of a command and hit tab and it just shows you all the things you could have meant, possibly could have meant. It's a little bit more discoverable um, like that. And one of the cool things is where it gets the suggestions and completions from are not just uh, your history and completion files, which it can do. It'll also automatically parse man pages. So everything you have installed, including from um, your package manager, wherever, as long as it has a man page, uh, Fish will automatically parse that and build the completions and suggestions for you, which is pretty cool. Um, it is, the configuration is, it aims to be, you don't really configure it, it just kind of works out of the box as part of its philosophy, but it is, it does have a really nice configuration tool. And this is where you want to get your Rotten Tomatoes ready, probably. Uh, this is optional but it has a web-based config editor, which is really more of a web-based option editor than it is a config editor. So if you want to select your prompts or change colors for syntax highlighting, stuff like that, um, you don't have to open config files and mess around with them. You can just pop open a web config editor. And it comes with a big library of shells or uh, shell prompts that you can kind of customize a little bit from there um, if that's more your speed. Now, that said, I know probably most people here like tweaking stuff and like editing configs, um, and I do too, which is why I like Fish, because it saves me the time of editing configs for my shell, so I can spend that time editing configs for things that I actually enjoy working with, as opposed to just spending that time getting my shell working. But if you're a Zeesh user and you love uh, writing shell scripts to change your prompt and stuff like that, all of the things that the web editor sets are just uh, config, are just either functions or uh, environment variables in config files. So you can pop open Vim and just edit configs like you can in Zeesh. And if you choose to do that, you don't have to worry about horrible uh, X-term escape sequences. So like to do colored prompts and stuff like that, you sometimes have to mess with like um, look up dictionaries of escape sequences and stuff. In Fish, you don't really have to worry about that because it wraps it all um, in things like set color and so forth. Can you see this? Are these big enough? Um, yes. Okay. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about um, remembering all of your um, 
or uh, escape sequences like that, and it will automatically end them for you. So if you've ever like set your prompt to some escape sequence and then forgotten to unset it later, or your program crashed before you did the corresponding end one, um, Fish will take care of cleaning that up for you, so you don't end up like with a totally garbled prompt because you tried to make it look fancy. So I can feel all the Zish users. I can feel it radiating off of you. Like, wait, can't Zish do that? Like, pick me, pick me. Yeah. Zish can totally do, of all the stuff that we've covered so far, and of all the stuff that we will cover for the rest of the talk, uh, Zish can do all of it, totally. But you have to configure it. At the minimum, you're installing Oh My Zish, you're opening up config files, you're installing plugins for Oh My Zish, you're spending days and days and days, you're like, oh, this script was written for an older version of Oh My, can't get it to work, I gotta, you know, et cetera. And it becomes an ordeal. Which is great. If that's what you want, then Zish, if you enjoy configuring your shell, totally go for Zish. But part of Fish's philosophy is to be really um, just discoverable and also easy to set up. It's a very batteries included kind of philosophy. Um, I almost want to say convention over configuration. You install it. It's easy to figure out how it works. It does what you want it to, and you don't have to mess with it. You can tweak it, but you don't have to you don't have to configure it to make it usable. Um, and so that leads us into kind of Fish's philosophy that guides their uh, design decisions is this will be a popular one in a Linux meetup. Configurability is the root of all evil, is what they say. <laughs> I can feel the hate already. Um, but <laughs> at least you didn't say unity. At least you didn't go there. Um, but what they're, really what they're saying there is not that uh, configuration for, it's not saying like for server software configuration is bad, but for user facing software, it should figure out what you want. You shouldn't have to tell it, I like this and this and this. It should be intuitive enough that no matter what your preferences are, it just kind of molds itself to that without you having to explicitly set it up and then use it. Um, and it does that really well. Um, it also, some of the other laws that guide it while we're on the topic of the philosophy of fish is the law of orthogonality, orthogonality, I didn't go to college, I don't know how to pronounce that. Someone can correct me. Um, which is kind of like a, an extension on the Unix philosophy, like your shell, basically what they're saying is your shell should come with utilities that all do different things from each other. You shouldn't have two things that, two features that do the same thing as each other or umbrella features. It should come with a really small set of functionality that you chain together to do what you want, i.e. the Unix philosophy. And it should be discoverable. So you shouldn't have to read through man pages to figure out how to use it. You should just type fish, hit enter, and the rest of it should come naturally as you're using it. Um, and it honestly kind of accomplishes all those things pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's good. There are some other laws that they do, like it shouldn't crash and it shouldn't suck and stuff like that, but those are less important. Okay, so back to, back to the more technical stuff, back to screenshots of terminals. Um, one of Bash's issues, Bash is a great scripting language for what it's for. I'm not hating on Bash, but it can at times be a little ugly. Um, fish, a little bit less ugly. I'll bump these up. Oh, does this not, can I not bump this up? That's sad. Fish is a little bit less ugly. Um, you get syntax highlighting, you get um, four, is just four, you get four X in whatever it feels like most other scripting languages. Um, arrays are a little bit more first class than they are in Bash, so your argv is an array, your path is an array, etc. Functions are your function keyword, um, test and square brackets work the same way they do in every other shell. Um, Functions use function keyword. Things end with end. Switch case doesn't have right parentheses. It just has the word switch and the word case, which feels a little bit more like every other programming language in the world. And you'll notice also everything ends with end. So there's no if ends with phi, case ends with esac, you know, while and done. There's just end, which is honestly kind of a big thing. And you'll notice also that in all of these screenshots, um, I don't have like an editor open. Those aren't in Vim or anything. They're just on the command line. Um, in addition to highlighting your syntax, if you're writing like a two or three line script, just inline in the shell, it'll auto indent, it'll auto unindent. 
it'll kind of behave like a really, really cut down, simple editor right on the command line. So if you're just typing in a two or three line script, um, you don't have to worry about popping open an editor. Is, so, that, is that driven by keyword? Yes. The auto indent and auto unindent are driven by keyword. The syntax highlighting is a little more complicated, et cetera. Okay, so that's kind of the macro stuff. That's kind of the big, those are the big reasons you would want to use fish. Um, but if that didn't convince you, then there is something that might is the more small stuff, the more micro, uh, the devils in the details, the penguins in the details, or something like that. Um, Prevde, Prevde, Prev directory, um, goes back to the directory you're in before. Except unlike in Bash, you can do it multiple times. You can go back to whatever directory you're in like an hour ago. It's a really minor thing, but it makes a big difference, honestly. Uh, fish write prompt, an even minorer thing. We'll get to the more interesting stuff in a second, I promise. Um, instead of having to play with escape sequences to write align parts of your prompt, if you're into that, you can just use fish write prompt. Okay, now onto the slightly more, slightly bigger, uh, small stuff. Um, abbreviations are a really nice feature. So in Bash or in Fish or in Zisha, whatever, you'll probably find yourself making lots of aliases. Um, like you type git commit a lot, as I'm sure we'll see in the next talk. Um, git commit is a popular one that you might, you know, shorten to like GC or something with an alias. But the issue with that is A, you lose your completions. And B, it's confusing for everyone who isn't you. Like if you're looking in your bash history from a month ago, or if you have someone looking over your shoulder, if you're pair programming or something, not to be too much of a hipster, um, they're like, what is GC? Is that the new GNU compiler? Like what's, what's going on with this? Um, in Fish, it, will, it has a feature called abbreviations, where it behaves like an alias that resolves as soon as you type it. So instead of typing GC, typing the rest of your command, hitting enter, and having your shell figure out what you meant, you type GC, you hit space, and it fills out the rest of your command for you. So all your completions work. It's a little bit more clear what's happening. Um, nice benefits like that. You mean like an auto expand? Does it, when you hit the space, does it go to git commit? Does yep. it show git commit? Yes. OK. But what if you then type backspace and you want to change it? If you, want, if you type GC, but you didn't mean to press space? You have to backspace through the whole gate commit. Sorry. Anything else? No? Next slide? Okay. Uh, it has Vi mode. This is actually new. Fish didn't have Vi mode until a couple of versions ago. And uh, what it has over your typical like read line Vim mode is a visual mode. If you hit escape and then hit V, it won't just like give up and be like, hey, you get an instance of Vim. Like I don't I don't know what visual mode is, just here's Vim figured out. Uh, it'll do visual mode on the command line. They haven't gotten, uh, I don't think, block or uh, column yet, but it does character visual mode. And it shows you what mode you're in. So if you've ever, if you have, if you use Vi mode, um, I don't know if any of you have done this, but I will sometimes think that I'm in uh, insert mode and I'm actually in normal mode, and I'll like accidentally, you know, spawn a swarm of locusts or install Windows or something equally horrible like that. Um, because I thought it was in insert mode, and fish will show you what mode you're in, and it'll it kind of tweak in real time as you change modes. It'll show it to the left of your prompt, which is nice. Um, I recommend, if, if this seems cool to you, check out the docs. Just Google like fish command docs, and there's tons of good stuff in there. Um, I don't want to bore you to death with like a million slides of little things that fish can do. But really the key is in the micro kind of details. The key is in not just the big features that jump out, but in using it, all the little stuff that they've done to make it feel really usable on the command line, feel really friendly, um, which you kind of have to play with yourself to get a real feel for it. Um, which brings us back to it being really easy to discover and to set up. Um, you can install it with your distros package manager and then just type fish and hit enter and the rest of it kind of figures itself out. You don't need to read through docs. You don't need to install oh my zish or fish or whatever. Don't need to uh, edit config files. You can, um, but you can just type fish and play with it. And that is, that is all I have. Questions? Hit me. 
Uh, does fish do uh, multiplexing like screen or tmux? No, you would run fish inside of your terminal multiplexer. Anything else? Is there a brew cask or anything like that for it? Is there like brew install fish? This is a Linux meetup. You asked me about brew, yes there is. Yeah, you can do brew install fish. Okay. <laughs> Everyone talk about it being a Linux meetup. <laughs> <laughs> we see the app. <laughs> Shit, they're on to me. <laughs> so, this is, so this is still a shell. How does it react or behave over SSH connections, especially multiple connections inside of screening Tmux, etc.? Um, I use it in Tmux um, with like tons of windows and half of them, half of my splits being SSH sessions to machines that are running fish and I've never had an issue with it uh, being weird or being slow, okay. anything like that. It's pretty lightweight. Have you ever run it with something like Powerline? Um, I have not run Powerline in Fish. There is, uh, it does have Powerline support. There is a Fish Powerline uh, package that will integrate it there um, on the shell. And I think that works just the same way it does in like Zsh or anything else. Um, but I haven't personally played with it. Anything else? Cool. Thank you. Thank you.